Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? This is Amanda. I do hope that you're well. Today is the 29th of October, and this is going to be a video where we look at the energy of Lilith. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to bring through some channeling, some information, some background energy on who she is, and also importantly, why I feel as though now is the time to bring her through on my channel. Um, I haven't talked about her energy before or attempted to channel her. Um, I have a gatekeeper energy always, which is Archangel Metatron, who's giving me the big green light to do this. And indeed, her energy is just very strong, really wanting to come through at this time. And actually, if we look at the time that I'm recording this, we are in between eclipses. We've just had a partial solar eclipse. And on the 8th of November, we're building up to a total lunar eclipse and a full moon in Taurus. I believe it's also called a blood moon, um, the one that's coming up on the 8th. And then we have 11-11. So 11-11, those of you that follow me on this channel, <coughs> you'll know I always try and bring through some sort of theme that's linked into light and dark. And when we look at the energy of Lilith, here is an archetypal energy, a primal, original, uh, feminine energy, if not the primal, original, feminine energy, who just has so much light and darkness associated with her um, that I felt as though it was time to unpick this. Has to be said as well, those of you that don't maybe know anything about her, if you do a quick Google search of Lilith, you will often be put off from going much deeper um, because there's a lot of stuff out there linked into calling her the demon queen, um, a lot of demonology energy that is attached to her. Um, and although I would never wish to whitewash her and uh, weaken who she is as an energy because, yes, she does stand for us needing to look into the darkness that is in our world and very much within ourself. She is one of these um, energies that's been very much misjudged and maligned through the centuries, indeed through thousands of years, indeed really probably from the first spark of creation itself. Um, I will put a couple of links below this video for those of you that want to just do a little bit of um, initial research into her. Um, it's a huge subject. There are books, there are ancient texts devoted to Lilith. So I don't want to necessarily go into all of that on this video. Um, I feel as though there's a reason she's wanting to come through to deliver a message for us, very much linked into um, the feminine, uh, the energies of independence and freedom that I really would like to put centre stage. But we do also just need to address who she is and uh, where she sort of comes into things. Um, just very quickly, if I just pull up a little bit of information here that I've got on her, um, she's said to be the original, um, the original woman. Uh, she said to predate Eve. So we've all heard of the story of Adam and Eve. And of course, Ad, um, Eve is expelled from the Garden of Eden. Eden. Um, interesting, the Garden of Eden. I'll come back to that because there's an energy of uh, equality that we need to talk about in this video. And the energy of Eden makes me think of the energy of balance and the scales needing to be rebalanced, certainly with regard to who she is and who she was not. But yeah, we've all heard of the Garden of Eden. We've heard of Adam and Eve. Eve is cast out for tempting Adam. Um, and then women are sort of cursed forevermore in terms of childbirth being painful. It's not the sort of loving God that I know uh, personally. Um, but, you know, let's not make this all about the Old Testament versus the New Testament. Um, the point about Lilith is that uh, when God created Adam from dust, from the earth, he was also said to have created Lilith from dust and from the earth. So they were created equal. Um, and I'm just going to read a little bit here from, um, I'll name the website below. Uh, da, 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 da. 
Lilith, the first wife of Adam. According to the first Eve story, Lilith was created by God from dust and placed to live in the garden with Adam until problems arose between them both when Adam tried to exercise dominance over her. One story tells that Lilith refused to lay beneath Adam during sex. She believed that they were created equal, both from the dust of the earth, and thus she should not have to lay beneath him. After Adam disagreed, Lilith fled the Garden of Eden to gain her independence. Adam told God that Lilith had fled, um, and God sent three angels to retrieve her. The three angels found Lilith in a cave, bearing children, but Lilith refused to come back to the garden. The angels told her that they would kill 100 of her children every day for her disobedience. And in revenge and because of this, Lilith is said to rob children of life um, and responsible for the death of babies. So let's just unpick that before we go any further. Here we've got a God who basically, um, via the angels, which are a bridge to the Godhead, tells the woman, Lilith, who flees because she disobeys, that... Uh, hundred of her children every day will be killed because she has disobeyed and not been obedient. I mean, that is just the biggest red flag I've ever heard in my life um, and should be a red flag to anybody who believes in a loving God. So this is where it all sort of starts to stem from in terms of Lilith becoming this demon type figure in mythology. And of course, is written about in ancient texts, partic particularly ancient Jewish texts. Um, and it all gets pretty dark, um, pretty uh, evil. And, you know, a lot of people won't touch the Lilith energy with a barge pole. Indeed, when I first looked at it and was researching it, I thought, oh, I don't know if I really want to get into all of this. And then I had her coming through so strongly saying, no, please, please do. I have a message. Um, and I also had Metatron just willing me on as well. And then I thought about it for myself and it was like a thunderbolt moment. I suddenly thought, hold on, this just sounds just like the stories of what the church has done through thousands of years, millennia, to females, which is suppressing them, which is that you are secondary to men. And if you don't obey and you don't comply, terrible things are going to happen to you. And of course, they still do in parts of our world. If you look at the story of Mary Magdalene, the early church, um, you know, denounces her as a prostitute and a whore. She's said to have seven demons. Again, that word demons that are cast out of her. Um, but we know now that Mary Magdalene was none of these things. And indeed, um, of course, it was the Catholic Church who had to basically go back on what they had previously said to say, no, she wasn't the prostitute. She wasn't the whore seems to be this whole energy that you're either the whore or you're the virgin and there's nothing in between. And this goes all the way through history, back through many, many thousands of years. And it just feels as though the energy of Lilith has been caught up in all of this as well. Um, the three angels that basically beckon her back to the garden and you know tell her to basically repent and behave and obey... Um, have got the names, and I thought this was interesting from a Jewish perspective. They have the names Senoi, San Senoi, and Senangelof, excuse the pronunciation. The initials SSS, which I'm just going to leave there, that I thought stood out to me. They have the three initials SSS. Um, but anyway, supposedly that uh, these three archangels... Um, have amulets that if you put amulets on the children you're supposed to be safe from Lilith's curse but I don't feel there is any curse I don't feel that there is this huge energy of her standing for evil and darkness I feel as though she represents our darkness and our evil and our shadow that as a humanity we cannot face um, and haven't faced ever since that point in creation. And what she's saying to me here is that 
if we wish to return to the Garden of Eden, and I've talked about this a lot in videos over the years, that Eden could very well be another term for new earth, the ascended earth, the awakened earth, the evolved earth, the enlightened earth. How can we truly enter that until we heal this primal feminine scar and this primal feminine wound, which is that if you are a woman who speaks up and says no and is independent and stands for freedom, um, you are forever cast as the sinner and the wrongdoer. So I want to look at all of this. I want to get stuck into it. Um, of course, the other thing to say, I don't think I've mentioned this already, is that Lilith, when she's created by God, is from the dust, as is Adam. But because she then flees, uh, God creates another woman for Adam. But this time he creates Eve with Adam's rib. So Eve is only able to be created via taking something from the man. So she's not equal. Um, so Eve seems to be this more subservient energy. And Lilith is this raw, primal, independent, fierce power. And that's very threatening. It's, was very thre it's, it's very threatening still in parts of the world now. But it was even more threatening 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, however many years ago we're talking. Because this almost sort of pre this predates Christianity. It predates the Bible. It predates um, it predates many civilizations, um, but anyway, I encourage you to do your own research. I'm now going to bring through what I feel as though she wants to say in this session. Um, when I sat down to do a more general reading for today, I p was preparing my altar with some candles, cloths, cards. And I pulled a card from the goddess deck from Colette Baron Reed, and I got this one, which is Lilith. And it's the card of independence. And I'd just like to read, I'd like to read the, I'd, I would like to read to you the first paragraph uh, because, and then we'll move on from it. It says, the Jewish goddess Lilith refused to be dominated by the first man and as a result was called a demon in the stories that followed. These inaccurate and damaging stories are so old and repeated so often that no one recognises how pervasive their implications are. From another perspective, Lilith offers this lesson. No one can prevent you from fully blooming, from learning all you can, from evolving and choosing freedom. Only your conditioned thinking can do that. Be proud and accountable and claim your power and hold it wisely. So there's this um, fear that we have within ourselves that goes back to the primal wound that Lilith um, had or encountered, which is that we cannot be independent. Um, but as we move towards New Earth, that's exactly what we are being asked to look at, independence and freedom. Um, I also pulled another couple of cards last night, uh, and I'm going to pull a few more as well. Um, this is from a deck which is called Wisdom of the House of Night, which is actually linked to the goddess Nyx. Um, slightly different, but I feel as though it's appropriate to pull for a video on Lilith. We have the Forbidden card and we have the card of Fulfillment. So two Fs, Forbidden and Fulfillment. I also am hearing the word fun and frivolity, okay, um, and fuck actually as well. So, you know, excuse my language, but we're talking Lilith here and we're going to be, I'm going to be talking in a different way to how you might expect me to or I normally do. So here we've got Forbidden and we've got um, Fulfillment. Um, let me pull one more card from this deck today and then we'll get straight into the channeling. And actually she was chatting. <laughs> if, a, if an energy can chat like this, it sounds a bit derogatory really, but I want to say chat, yeah, because she, it's an approachable energy. This is the whole thing. It's almost like we've been forbidden to tap into the Lilith energy because it's like you don't want to go, go there. And it's almost as though if you tap on the door to try and approach Lilith, it's as though you don't want to know what's on the other side of that doorway because there's going to be monsters and demons and, you know, nasty things that go bump in the night. Whereas actually when you do knock on the door, you just face your own darkness anyway. And what she said to me yesterday is that 
unless you look into your darkness, you will never be free. And indeed, if humanity never looks into its, into its darkness and its shadows, it will never be free. So we have to knock on the door. But you knock on the door with, you know, if you have a trusted guide already, it might be Jesus, it might be Metatron, it could be anybody. If you want to take them with you, I strongly advise that you do so. Because it's like getting to know, this is the energy of Metatron coming through here now. He's saying it's like anything. When you get to know a new energy... Um, and you're maybe a little bit unsure or uncertain or scared or fearful or pensive, um, take take me with you. Take me with you because I'm never going to take you somewhere or I'm never going to introduce you to an energy that is detrimental to you. It's only ever going to be helpful because ultimately when we when we knock on the forbidden door, which is where she feels as though she's behind it, it's where she's been banished to, that cave, um, that's where actually you truly start to learn who you really are, who we all really are. When we can um, accept and acknowledge and heal and integrate all parts of ourself, the light and the dark. OK, you can't ascend by only standing in the light. You, you, you ascend by standing in the darkness and in the light. OK, that's the truth of the situation. OK, let's just pull one more card here. There's also this energy of nice girls and good girls. Don't do that. Don't say that. Don't behave like that versus good girls. And it's as though the history of our civilization has been based on the demonization of a certain type of woman. Um, at, but putting another type of woman on a pedestal and most women can't live up to being put on a head pedestal and don't even want to be on the bloody pedestal anyway. So um, it's time to get off the pedestal, it's time to get real, and it's time for us to be able to look at each other in all of our entirety, okay? And I think I'm being told this is very much what the symbolism of the nudity as well in the Garden of Eden is. It's to do with when we're naked, when we can truly see each other, um, we truly see all of each other. We see our flaws, we see our light, we see our defects, we see our wounding, we see our beauty, we see all of it. Okay, right. We've also got another uh, energy here just to help clear the path to the door that is locked to her. And this is Ganesh. I'm not surprised to see that card. I did say on my social media yesterday that I was going to be attempting to channel a new ascended master. I'll come back to that in a moment that I haven't done yet. And could anybody guess who it was? And Ganesh came through as, is it going to be him? Um, no, not yet, but I would like to do that. But we do know that Ganesh is the remover of obstacles. Um, and I'm looking over there because I've got a Ganesh statue. So his energy is here anyway. Um, but yeah, so we've got that. Ascended master. Yeah, because you see, even that, so that will trigger some people that how can she be an ascended master? But you're on a planet of duality. You're here to master the energy of light and dark. Um, and she is both. What she's saying is she is both because you are both. Um, you are both saint and you are sinner. You are both angel and you are demon. You have all of the seeds of everything within yourself. Um, because God created everything. So this is the other thing about the original story of, of, of her and what she did. God created her. He created her. God doesn't make any mistake. God didn't sort of create a dud. <laughs> Let's just think about that for a moment. He didn't create a dud. He created what was intended. He created a... Uh, a woman, a feminine energy that was willful and independent and wild and equal. Uh, we have to appreciate, so I'm just taking my socks off because oh, I'm hot. Something about here about having bare foot as well. Don't worry, I'm not going to strip off and be completely naked in this video, but there is something about just removing clothing, actually. Um, God created all equal. He didn't make a mistake when he created her. Uh, yes, we have free will, but she was there to teach us something, which is that it's OK to question. It's OK to question. And I don't believe that there were angels sent who were there to then take away her children and rob her of her of her offspring. You know, that's not the God that I know. OK, um, 
Right, what else have I got written down from last night? Um, I noticed a few comments coming in when I said I was going to be channeling her, which was, oh good, it's about time that toxic femininity got called out. Can you see what we do there when we say things like that? We're still into the old energy, which is that toxic femininity is out there. It belongs to that person over there who's displaying it. It's, it's projection. It doesn't mean that they might not be that, but it's not owning that that which you see in others is a reflection of that which is within yourself. And it's the hardest lesson to actually learn. Um, but that, I feel, is what she's here to teach us. So... It's, we're back to this whole good girl, bad girl thing, aren't we? That, you know, to be female is to embody certain qualities. Um, but if you stray into other energies, then somehow you are some sort of she-devil or demon. Uh, but within women, as within men, there is everything. There is every potentiality for both great goodness and light and also darkness and evil. There's a case in the UK at the moment, it concluded yesterday and it was a, uh, I'm sure it's many cases like this all around the world, it was a woman who had killed another woman in a really quite brutal and horrible way. She knew this woman as well. She preyed on a vulnerable woman for money, killed her, decapitated her, put her in a suitcase, took the body down to another part of the UK after two, week, two weeks and she's on camera driving down the road where the body was found. She's on camera with the suitcase. You know, it's the, the evidence is completely and utterly overwhelming that this woman did it. And she was uh, sentenced to life imprisonment yesterday. Interestingly as well, she it was the first ever court case in the UK whereby the verdict was recorded on television live. Um, so that seems to almost like be shining a spotlight again on the feminine, the darkest deeds that the feminine can do was broadcast into people's homes if they chose to watch it. The other part of this case that I think is appropriate and why I'm wanting to talk about it in this video, which is about not owning what women can do, the evil that women can do, the darkness that women can do, um, which isn't just you know, personified with regards to Lilith it, it is all of that. It's within us. Um, the woman who has been sentenced to life and is now in jail, when the police knocked on her door to arrest her, she comes to the door and she's in her pyjamas or something. And uh, the police say to her, is there anybody else in the house? And she says, just my mother. And then she calls out to her mum and she says, Mummy, I didn't do it. Mummy, I didn't do it. It's like the little girl. It's the little girl. Mummy, I couldn't possibly have done this. It's like sugar and spice and all things nice. That's what little girls are made of. Mummy, I didn't do it. When she's sentenced yesterday, she cries up to her mother again, Mummy, are you... It's all... It's, it's the little girl energy again. And the mother outside court says... No, of course my daughter didn't do it. I refuse to believe that my daughter did it, even though the evidence is completely and utterly overwhelming. It's like she couldn't possibly have done that because she's my daughter. She couldn't possibly have done that because she's a woman, but she did do it. So all of this is coming up and we're going to be seeing more and more of it, I think, probably in the news in terms of what women are capable of. But again, try it's, it's OK to, of course, call that out, but we must always try and take it back into ourself in terms of the darkness that can lie within all of us. Jordan Peterson has done a lot of good work recently with regards to um, calling out humanity in terms of the seeds are within everybody to do pretty much anything, given the right set of circumstances. And there but for the grace of God go I. It's why you see, for example, in war, law-abiding, decent people suddenly behaving in the most horrendous, brutal, inhumane ways, okay? It's why you get nations, historically, who just turn a blind eye to genocide 
um, don't want to know about it. It's like there's a complicity within the human race, uh, which is that if enough people think something's okay, I'll sort of go along with it. It's darkness that's seeded. And the uh, Lilith energy is wanting us to look at that. It's wanting us to take responsibility for that. It's wanting us to take ownership of that. And then when we've done that, and we've acknowledged it, and we've healed it, then we may have a chance of walking back into Eden, but not before. Um, and I wrote something down yesterday about the return to Eden. Uh, have I got that piece of paper here? I've got bits of paper all over my house. Um, no, I'll, I'll come back to that. Okay. Let me just now uh, go into her energy and see what wants to come through uh, as we're recording. Okay. The silence, the stillness, the darkness, the void, the place of creation, the seed. You find me in the darkness, is what she's saying. You find me in the stillness. You find me in the silence. And she's showing me the energy of her, of her energy, sitting just within a corner, just slightly out of eyesight, slightly out of reach. But all you have to do is reorientate and turn yourself towards her. And she's fully present. And she's presenting herself and is a master teacher. Um, and she's saying, when the student is ready, I am here to teach. I am here to reflect back to each person um, that which is unhealed and unprocessed within themselves. She's also talking about the energy of past lives and what we have done before, which we still maybe have not fully um, acknowledged or processed, um, that can come up it's like latent within ourself. And then you might get a trigger and you react a certain way to a certain type of person or a certain thing or a certain situation or a certain country or a certain belief system. And it's all un unhealed wounding. It's something you might have done before in a previous life. You haven't always been the good guy. Goes without saying. Okay, so I'm seeing her just in this corner. She's on the left-hand side corner. Uh, of course she is thinking about it. The left-hand side of the body represents the feminine. So it's as though within the feminine psyche, we have put her into a little corner, a dark corner, where, you know, I'm now seeing the feminine collective not really wanting to go, not really wanting to acknowledge it. Um, I'll stay here where it's safer. I won't go there and look at that. But that is the bit that needs to be looked at. Um, I'm seeing uh, more and more people starting to wake up, though, to this other side of their femininity, um, which is literally just another aspect of who you are. Um, now, of course, she also represents much that is good. She represents independence, strength, bravery, courage, fearless femininity is what she's saying, sensuality, sexuality, fertility. Again, she's telling me, go back to the story, the original story, which is that she's banished to the cave. Um, she's having children. Uh, whose children is she having? There's no man in the cave. It's like this energy of woman being the original creator, being the creator of life, that being so threatening to a patriarchal society over thousands of years, that, that that's why she's in the corner because of the power of what she's able to do, which is to birth. Um, she's saying, I am no threat to children. I am no threat to children. I never was a threat to children. I'm a threat to the male system of control. I'm a threat to those who wish to keep others enslaved. But the biggest enslavement, she's saying, is in your own mind. Your mind is the main prison and you all gladly open the doors and walk inside and exist within a prison 
of self-imposed exile from who you truly are, who you truly came to be. And an inability to show all aspects of yourself. She's now drawing me to, to, to the male energy. And she sh let me just see what the energy with men is towards Lilith. Okay, I'm getting the word confusion, total confusion. And I'm feeling the energy of the masculine energy is confused with regards to the energy of Lilith. Because again, she's saying there's been programming for thousands of years, which is that women are either the whore or women are the angel or the saint, uh, the virgin. There's nothing ever in between. It's And so there is this dichotomy within uh, many men's minds, not all men's minds, in many men's minds, particularly those clinging onto the old patriarchal energy, that um, good girls behave like this, bad girls behave like that. Double standards is what I'm hearing, double standards. She's now showing me the energy of the marriage um, ceremony. And certainly within the faith that I come from, the uh, demand to obey your husband uh, I'm sh being shown Princess Diana in my uh, mind and I'm being told that Diana refused to obey Charles during the marriage ceremony uh, and that being a very um, defining moment for many women. Um, you don't obey is what she's saying. You don't have to obey. The only person you should be obeying is yourself and your own uh, God light, the energy of God light within you, but you are the God light, you are the one that creates that. Um, talk about your relationship with you and God. So, the old traditional stories it's God that you know somehow seeks retribution via the angels on Lilith because she runs away, she refuses to obey. That's the traditional story. Let me just see what her feelings are with regard to her relationship between her and God. Having made peace with it is what she's saying. Having made peace. God is many parts. God is many fractals. This is interesting. She's talking about the uh, differentiation between the Old Testament God and the New Testament God being two very different aspects of the one, the oneness God is, if God is everything, she's saying God is everything, God represents everything. And so within the Old Testament, you have the representation of one, one reflection of what God could be, how God could look, how God could behave. And then within, for example, the New Testament, you have a different reflection of how God could be, how God could behave, what God, God could say. And she says the one that you resonate with is the one that the it reflects the program that you have running within yourself. So if you're running a program of fear, uh, primarily, you will particularly resonate with the God of the Old Testament, which is that you, if you stay along these lines and you do, do it this way, you're going to be OK, you're going to be saved. But if you stray from the path, hell and damnation will rain down upon you. And so that energy of fear keeps you trapped and keeps you into an old program. Whereas the God of the New Testament is softer. But she says there are many testaments. She says it's just that people are attached to just one book. And she says that's a controversial thing to say, but it's the truth. And she's now showing me many different religions, many different books, many different ancient texts, many new texts still to be born. Because God is always continually creating. And so there will always be new material, there will be new teachings, there will be new books to study. She says in many ways that you you are the book anyway. You write the book. Your version of the way that you think God is comes from the program that you are running, the script that you are running based upon multiple lifetimes, based upon what's happen, happening to you at this one point in time, based upon society, based upon the conditions upon a particular age and a particular season. Um, so she's saying God is everything. Um, in the same way that uh, she's saying, I am everything and you are everything. She's saying people have, start, people have wrongly identified God 
in a one-dimensional, three-dimensional way based on the version of God that they read or they tap into, whereas God is everything. And that's actually huge. Let's just pause a moment to just reflect on that. And just have a think and dwell in your own heart, your own mind, your own knowingness, in terms of which version of God you are responding to, you are replying to, you are resonating with. And try, if you can, to think about, is that coming from your own sense of self or is that coming from others and in particular society? OK, she wants to say something about society here. She says she's always been on the outskirts of society. And again, going back to the earliest days, fleeing the garden. If the garden were to be populated, she would always have been an outsider. She says there's nothing wrong with being an outsider. There's nothing wrong with thinking differently. There's nothing wrong with thinking independently. That not everyone has to think the same way, be the same way. But she's a perfect example, she's saying, of what happens when you have the strength and the determination and the willpower to go against the standard narrative of a particular age and a particular day. Um, and she says the hell and the damnation is other people's judgments and other people's um, arrows that are flung your way. And this is what has happened to me through many centuries. But my time is coming now as more people are waking up to their own sovereignty, their own independence and wanting to do it their way. And she's now showing me each of us as an aspect of God. And if each of us are an aspect of God, we're all like these beautiful independent little arrows that are going off here, going off there, um, behaving, responding, um, absorbing, observing, noticing creation, the universe, your life, the present moment you're in, in completely individual, unique ways. And she's saying this is going to go against the script that is given to you by a society, which is that if you do this, you stay with the crowd and you're safe. But there's many, she's saying, within the crowd that don't feel safe anymore within the crowd, even though they're doing what they're told to do. They're wanting to become like the arrows, which God always intended them to be, which was to go and explore and be and be free to be free to be anything that they wish to be. And this momentum is only going to grow. And she's just shown me a cascade of multicolored arrows. Um, and the arrows are basically your energy and they're going off in lots of different directions. It feels she's using the word atoms, atoms. It's as though we're all atoms of light. And it's as though what's happened to humanity is the atoms of light have just congealed into one big homogenized mass, which is that humanity looks a certain way. Humanity responds to a certain thing. Humanity believes this. Humanity doesn't believe that. And she's saying this homogenization is starting to um, um, disintegrate because more and more are breaking off from what she's now calling the iceberg. It's as though, we're in, it's as though humanity is like this big iceberg, but there's this splintering, there's this watering, there's this leaking from the whole, which is good because then you create a uh, true uh, multiverse adventures, multi-dimensional adventures. Your soul can be free to go and explore and do what it chooses to, to be. But the block and the trap is the mind, which says that if I do that, how is it going to work? How does society then run? Who's in control? She's saying, why not just allow the dominoes to fall and to see what arises from that. That's basically what I'm, I'm, I'm seeing with her here. OK. Um, talk to me a little bit about women. Let's pull this beautiful card here. 
This is from a deck that's called um, Divine Feminine and Masculine Reunited by Christabel Jezebel. And this has got a depiction of Lilith here. And she's got the snake wrapped around her body. In um, some traditions, it's said that when Lilith went back into the garden, she actually went back in as the snake. So in some um, ancient artwork, you see Adam and Eve beside the tree and the snake has a feminine head and the feminine head is said to be that of Lilith. So, um, but anyway, you know, you, you might resonate with that, you might not, but here she is, she's got the apple, she's got the, she's got the snake, um, she's naked, she's voluptuous. Let's just see what this particular um, book says as well. So I'm just reading from um, the deck's writing here. Let me put the card up so you can see. Uh, it says, I'm here to talk about the templates of feminine energy that trace right back to the creation of humanity, right back to myself and my dear sister Eve. I was created in the same moment as Adam, and for this reason I knew that we were equals. I was cast out of the Garden of Eden and was then created from one of Adam's ribs. Eve represents the template of the repressed feminine who has been taught to smile, look pretty and not express her authentic emotions. I represent the wild woman, fully in her power, running free, not afraid of her sexuality and speaking her truth. It is not uncommon for a woman in her power to be shrouded in negative connotations. Look at the areas in your life where you feel unsafe to show your power. What do you hold back at work, around family or friends, out of fear of being seen as a bitch? I am bringing forward the message today to you that you are safe, that you are safe to be a wild woman. You can stand up for yourself and still be good. You can be a bitch and be of service. You do not have to play nice to be loved, valued and good. What this world needs most right now is authenticity, free expression of what is held within, opinions, emotions, shadow aspects. It's time to run wild and free. You see, that's what I was seeing with these arrows that were going everywhere. These arrows are also opinions. They are expressions. They are emotions. And, you know, we're, we're in a world where we know that it's as though you're only allowed to have a certain opinion on something. I mean, the censorship that is happening on our planet now should concern everybody, that if you speak away from the official narrative on so many subjects, you get disclaimers coming up, you know, on all social media platforms, or you're thrown off them. So the Lilith energy about the need to be free to express, to emote, is, is not just about um, how we present ourselves is about what we do it's about what we believe it's, it's what we share so very very important energy for everybody whether you're a man whether you're a woman um I have something here about i want to just to pick up on with her um hold on You don't have to play nice to be loved. Right, let's just go into that. You don't have to play nice to be loved, Lilith. Who wants to be loved, <laughs> she's saying. I mean, she's saying that tongue in cheek, but there's this energy of why do you always seek external validation? You should know that you are loved. You should love yourself. You should know that God loves you. Why are you always seeking external validation from others? So this thing about, uh, you know, if I'm nice, I'm going to be liked. If I'm nice, I'm going to be loved. She's saying, why do you do that? Why do you do that? Self-sovereignty knows that you already are loved. You already are sovereign. You already are strong. You already are worthy. It's this unworthiness wound is what she's saying needs to be healed. Um, she said, I always, I always was worthy. I was created equal with man. I was created from the first dust upon this earth. And she's showing me two seeds within the earth, deep, deep down in Mother Earth. She's showing me the tree. She's showing me the roots of the tree. She's then showing me bulbs um, of, you know, flowers yet to bloom underneath the roots of the tree. And then she's showing me the roots of those bulbs. And then she's going deeper and deeper and deeper into Mother Earth, into the core and she's just shown me the two black seeds, 
One is the masculine seed, one is the feminine seed. She says, I was there from the very beginning. I was, I am creation. I am creation. Why would I think that I was not worthy when I am creation? Um, so if you have issues to do with um, wanting to be liked, wanting to be loved, life will only be okay when I'm with a partner, when, I'm, when, I, when this has happened, when that has happened. You know, if people like me, Lilith is a good energy to call on to just remind you of your own worth. Okay. Anything else to say with regards to that? To hell with the patriarchy is what she's saying. <laughs> but it's it's not to hell with men. It's to hell with the old system. It's the whole the old system of control and suppression and obedience has to end. And it only ends when enough people stand up and claim it. Goddess of power, your true power. What else? Lilith. Lilith. Yeah, you see, because even her name, it's like it's a name not to be uttered. Um, it's a beautiful name. It's a beautiful name. Lilith. It just rolls off the tongue. Wishing. Chaos. Oh, I'll see. There's a fear in humanity that if you call upon her, that she's going to bring complete chaos and devastation. And that's because of the myths that are written about her. It's because of the demonization of her. If you wish upon Lilith and you wish upon her help, you create chaos. You create chaos in the garden. You create chaos in your own garden. You create chaos in your own psyche. Um, it's illusion is what I'm hearing. Card number nine, it's time to break out of that cycle. Sure, she will bring a tornado in because she will make you question. She will make you ask why you have put up with things for so long. She will ask why society runs along the lines that it runs along. She will ask why until there is no more questions to be asked. Um, but from the from from any chaos that she brings, clarity arrives in its wake. Um, it's like a tower energy that she brings in, a dismantling energy that she brings in. But that's where our world is needing to go. It's as though humanity is sitting by the wishing well, wishing it all right, wishing for all of the violence to stop. She's saying wishing for all of the hatred to stop. She says, how many times have you heard people say, I just wish for peace on earth? And then they carry on in their same way, with their same hatreds, their same prejudices, with their same judgments of them, of each other. And they expect peace on earth, the Garden of Eden to just arrive. She says, the wish, she's saying, show this card again. What I wish for humanity is that humanity actually looks into the reflection in the well. And when you look into the reflection in the well, you will see yourself. You will see yourself. You will see yourself. And that's what has to happen. That is what has to happen. That is what has to happen. She's repeating it three times. That is what has to happen. Because when that happens, the bridge then appears. The bridge does not come down until humanity has looked into the mirror, looked into itself, looked into its own darkness, been able to acknowledge and claim um, all aspects of itself. And it starts with you. Um, interestingly, this card is upside down on the bottom of the deck, which is the card of invisible and denial. OK, right. All right. OK, yeah, this is good. So basically, the thing is, though, nobody wants to look in the mirror. Everybody just wants to look at everyone else's issues. Everyone wants to just throw the stone at everybody else, um, that you are the sinner, that you're the one that's dark, that you're the one that did that, that you're the one, you're the one, you're the one. I'm just seeing like a playground now. She's showing me a playground and I'm hearing a crescendo of voices getting louder and louder and humanity's just pointing at each other. We're like, she says, you're like a playground. 
You're like a playground. Humanity is in a playground, base level. Everyone's still pointing it at each other after all these years, after all these decades, after all these centuries, after all these thousands of years, everyone's still pointing at each other. No one wants to look in the mirror. Very few want to look in the mirror. And it's as though if I make myself invisible and I, you know, it's like I don't really matter. It doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter the negative, horrible thoughts that I have, the spiteful thoughts that I have in my head. It doesn't matter. I'm sort of invisible. What I do doesn't count. Bullshit, she's saying. OK, we are in denial. Humanity is in denial. And the only way that you can get to success is that you focus on um, you focus on yourself, and that brings in the energy of belonging. And this was in reverse. You become untrapped. You become untrapped. At the moment, humanity is in the birdcage. You're trapped. You're trapped because you refuse to look at yourself. And actually, there's an energy coming through here of almost like disgust at humanity at the moment, um, because she's saying, I, let me, get, let me get the words right, I am embodying the darkness and the projected darkness that you don't wish to see in yourself. So I have become the monster. I have become the demon. I have become all that you hate all that is disgusting, all that is negative, all that is evil, all that is dark, because you will not look at it. You will not look at it. When are you going to look at it? Okay. How do we do this? How do we do this? How do we do this? What guidance can you give us, please, Lilith? We've heard your message. She's Her energy is coming across like she's stuck in the corner. Nobody's really been wanting to acknowledge her, speak to her, but she holds such power. She's now standing up in the corner and she's just, she has this enormous presence, enormous presence. I have the feeling of being a human being standing before her and it's like I'm looking up at this giant. I'm looking up and her energy is voluminous. Is that such a word? Voluminous. It's huge. It's like humanity is like, oh my gosh, it's a mountain. How do we, how do we begin to remember all of who we are? And she's dropping down a rope ladder. She's dropping down a rope ladder. And she's saying, and I've got full body chills, she's saying you take the first step. She's saying all masters will tell you the same thing. You take the first step. And you do not stop climbing. And you, um, you do not become frightened of the next step. And if you need a push up, you get a push up. She said the biggest... Um, the biggest block that humanity has at the moment is that they have almost got like, um, they're stuck on one, one level of the ladder. They're frightened of going any higher because they don't know what it feels like to ascend to the next plane. Where, and the next plane links into the energy of independence and freedom and questioning and sovereignty. And I'm hearing you have to grow a backbone. You have to grow a backbone. And this is not you, it's humanity is what she's saying. There's definitely an energy coming through from her today, which is almost despair or in terms of where humanity's at, what it will refuse to do. What happens if we refuse, if we carry on refusing, if not enough look up, if not enough want to keep on climbing? You'll just stay trapped, she's saying. You'll just stay trapped. You will never get this. Sorry, that is the card of um, understanding.
never done this on video before, but I'm needing to brush my hair. Okay, she wants to talk about hair. Um, she's always depicted with long hair. Um, there's something here linked into the senses, linked into, I'm being taken to the energy of a lady standing in front of a mirror and she's brushing her hair. She's adorning herself. She is appreciative of her body. She's appreciative of her looks. She is putting on the brightest red lipstick she owns. She is able to embrace her whole sexuality, her whole individuality, um, her whole essence. And I'm feeling this energy of an earthy, female goddess the goddess the goddess of light the goddess of shadow merging you are both the power of a woman 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 in her power threatens the world So do it, she's saying, so do it. And for the men to um, support, boy up such women. She's now talking about men. And there's this energy of slight sneer with regards to the inability of some men to be able to handle a real woman, an authentic woman in her power. Men who will want to do anything other than have an equal partner. They don't want somebody who answers back, she says. They don't want somebody who makes them look less than they are. They don't want an equal partner. They want a subservient partner. Fuck that. And now I'm seeing it the other way. For women to want an equal partner. For women not to want a man that they can look up to who will provide for them, who will look after them because they are somehow less than. I'm being given the energy of sort of like the wilting Victorian uh, women of my country who were, were just waiting, fanning themselves. Um, hold on. No, I haven't gone mad. Fanning themselves, waiting for Mr. Darcy to arrive. Fuck that. There's an energy of male, male and female wanting equality, true equality. What does that look like for a powerful masculine and a powerful feminine to come together? And she's saying it will shake the world. Now, of course, there are powerful men and women that are already together, but not many, she's saying, not many. Most of you are still operating on old programs that I can't survive without or that he can't survive without. She's showing me men that jump from relationship to relationship, anything but fearing because they fear being on their own. And women that jump from relationship to relationship, anything but be on my own. Be on your own, she's saying. Be independent for a while. Be independent for a lifetime. What is so scary about that? She's trying to build up the energy of masculine and feminine, but it's also about the energy within yourself. For you to have a strong masculine 
and a strong feminine and for them not to be competing with each other, for them to be equal. This is the inner work that you do, she's saying, to catch yourself when you see yourself about to fall back into the trap that, oh, but I need him or I need her. Need is not love. Need is not love. Need is need, is what she's saying. Um, okay. Right, so there's work to do then, guys, on our masculine and our feminine to catch ourselves when we fall back into the trap of I'm only good enough when I'm in a relationship will be another one. I'm only good enough when I'm married. I'm only good enough when I'm this. I'm only good. No. OK, you are good enough. You are worthy. You are loved, whether you're with somebody or whether you're not. But there's a lot of catching up to do with regards to both sexes, she's saying, um, starting to um, reorientate themselves, refocus themselves so that um, they truly are after the goal of independence and freedom. How are we doing? An hour in. Okay, I think we'll just have one final message, Lilith, and then we'll leave that here today. And I'm sure, <laughs> sure you're going to be coming back to us. Um, let's just see what she wanted to give me. Final message, Lilith. Oh, this is interesting. She's saying that she lives underneath the ocean um, or her energy is underneath the ocean. Um, she's saying, of course it is, because she's... Let me just get this. This is the world. This is our globe. Look at how much blue there is. You know, I am of the earth, she's saying, but I'm also of the seas. I'm of the water. I'm feeling like there's this underwater explosion or... Um, there's an underwater happening that's going to occur, which is going to unleash more of her energy into the world. Imagine if Lilith's energy is in the waters of the world and everybody actually has to drink it or bathe in it. Um, the world would change very quickly. She's not to be frightened of. She is to be... Um, she is the teacher. She's the teacher that's trying to help us get back to a place of equality um, but there's much work to do she's saying there's much work to do um, what about this whole energy of the demon the demon energy with you that people are frightened of people are frightened of their own demons is what she's saying people are frightened of the demons within themselves it's why so many people fall prey to addictions, anything to suppress and keep down our true feelings. Um, I wanted to ask about addiction, actually. It's just there's a card here about addiction I pulled earlier. Yeah, this one, the red wine. OK. She's saying you think nothing of drinking the blood of Christ. But yet that's not regarded in any way as a odd thing to do. She's just raising an eyebrow. There's this thing about... Um, I think she's trying to make the point that she is portrayed as this like bloodthirsty, horned um, woman being, monster, demon. You know, if you look up some of the images of her, they're really gross. They're all bloody. They're all, you know, the vampire queen, all of that succubus. Because that's her. It's okay to call her that. But yet, Jesus. Blood is interpreted in a different way. It's all the same blood that runs through the veins. Just pull another card on that. Mm. 
blood. <laughs> Couldn't be more two contrasting cards. <gasps> Playful kitty. We're back to this whole energy of light is all fluffy and kittens and puppies and chocolate box houses. And then here I am, Lilith, and I'm this horrible, bloodthirsty, blood-curdling, evil monstrosity. It's humanity that's done that. It's like, because we can't accept that actually darkness and light is within everything. I don't mean that the blood, the bloodthirstiness. I'm just trying to say that we've separated off the energy of... We've gone to ex extreme because we're in a dual dualistic world. It's as though there's good, there's evil, there's nothing in between. You're either good or you're evil. You can't be a bit of both. <sighs> Do I say this? I'll say this because it's a good example of what I'm trying to say. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let her say it. I'm going to give you the suggestion, Lilith, to talk about this one. Is it OK? Sure, she says. It's a great, a great example. Humanity cannot see people or situations or events as having both good and bad, shadow and light within them. But yet everything is and everyone is. So yesterday, Jerry Lee Lewis died. Um... Great Balls of Fire, great song. He was around at the time of Elvis, one of the pioneers of rock and roll, one of the greats, one of the greats. He also married his 12 or 13 year old cousin. He was a bigamist. He was light, he was dark. Would you like me to give another example, she says. How many would you like? Within the darkest figures in history, there is light. And with the lightest figures, there is also some darkness. She's talking about human beings there. There are, of course, masters that have ascended and, in, and become enlightened. She's showing me the energy of Jesus, the energy of Buddha. But human beings, they are of dust. As I was of dust. And I remind you too much of yourself. Look at yourself. Look in the mirror. Look in the reflection. She's now wanting to end this with Eden. Going back into Eden. She's saying, Eden becomes the reality. The bridge comes down. Where's that card? The bridge comes down when all are invited in. There is no heaven or hell. There is no fiery pit. There is one destination. And it's open to all who are able to integrate all parts of their being and accept um, their humanness. Who is your God, she says. Is he the God of vengeance and retribution and fire and brimstone and judgment and the one who murdered my children? Or is he the God of love and compassion? and forgiveness and purity which script are you running God is all you are all I am all and I am within you I am within all women I am the saint I am the sinner I am the angel, I am the demon, 
I am all. I am light. I am dark. I am human. Let's finish with Metatron as the gatekeeper energy. Archangel Metatron. This is what she showed me at the beginning. The tree, the roots, the earth, the seeds that we all come from. This is who we are. We're children of the universe. There is a, um, a blood moon, which is coming up on the November the 8th. And we have the hanged man. It's time for humanity to maybe start to question and think about things in a different light. Open their minds, expand pause, reflect, the bat, a reviled creature, a creature that's frightening to many, but actually an animal that signifies extraordinary transformation and transmutation, like the snake. She's bringing in the energy of the animals, the owl. The owl is a symbol associated with Lilith, the bat, the snake. The owl is one of her symbols. The owl comes out at dark. It's seen in the darkness. Its wisdom is needed in the darkness. And I've got a mixture of her and Metatron here now saying humanity is in the dark. Blinded in the dark. Open your eyes and see the truth of who you are. Open your eyes and see the truth of each other. And from that place of darkness, we just have all of these beautiful colours. I'm going to leave it there, guys. Oh, I will just say, I will just say, can't help it. But look, the next card that is the, is the world, the completion of a cycle. When humanity does that, we move on to the next cycle. And we transform like the butterfly that we are. We become the butterfly. We're still at a caterpillar stage. The butterfly has two wings, not just one, light and dark, fully integrated. With the colours, the colours come in. The colours come in. The colours come in. New earth energy comes in when you integrate the light and the dark. Um, I'll end also just by saying I haven't been using my sprays in this video, but, you know, for those that wish to go into the shadow, wish to go into their own darkness, the um, ones that I recommend are Midnight Indigo. Let me just see if I've got it on hand. Uh, yeah, Midnight Indigo, which is called Light in the Dark. It's an Archangel Metatron spray. We don't have a Lilith spray. Um, and I would probably back that up with White or Sunrise New Dawn. And of course, another representation of uh, this um, banished feminine archetype would also be Kali Ma. And we do have a Kali Ma spray, uh, Warrior Goddess. Again, I've done videos on Kali. Um, so leave it there for now. Take great care of yourself. Much love. Bye-bye for now. Bye.